Hey guys, Andrew Darlington with Veritas Insurance talking to you today about workers' comp. A question I get is, what do I need to do about my subcontractors in regards to workers' comp? Are they covered or are they not covered? Do I need to do anything special? Here in a second, I'll give you the answer. Okay, so workers' comp and subcontractors. I'm going to assume right now we're going to talk about subcontractors in construction because you have other situations where you have subcontractors not in the construction industry. So what do I need to do about my subcontractors? The state of Tennessee law is pretty clear. If there is a person on your job that does not have workers' comp, it's going to go up the food chain until it hits someone that has workers' comp. That person is going to pay for the premium on the audit. And that person is also going, their workers' comp policy is going to pay the claim. So if you're a GC and you hire a sub, who hires a sub, who hires a sub, who hires a sub, and this person has an employee that gets injured or the sub gets injured and there's no comp, no comp, no comp, no comp, no comp, it, you're eventually going to actually pay that claim, even though you don't even know who this person is. But they were injured at your job site and it kept on going because you paid them, they paid them, they paid them all the way down the line. And so it's going to hit you. Those other folks obviously have violated the law, should get fined in some shape, form, or fashion. But even all that aside, you're still going to have to pay the workers' comp, uh, the workers' comp premium. But the medical bills, lost wages, death benefit, uh, all those things that workers' comp would entail for that person. So that's why it's very important to make sure that your subcontractors have a workers' comp policy. Because if this guy had gotten hurt here and three levels up had a workers' comp, it would have stopped there and not come up to you. Uh, you would have had to pay some premium because a couple levels down, there's no way you wouldn't have had a certificate. So you paid premium, but at least the claim wouldn't have hit you, which is nice because then your experience mod and those types of things aren't, aren't affected. So yay for that, even though you're paying some premium, which you probably do not want to do. Haven't met anybody that enjoys paying premium um, until after the claim has been uh, until after they've had a claim and they say, I would have paid the premium had I known that it would have gotten there, but I digress. So subcontractors, what do I need to do? The best practice is to say you, you need to have workers comp. So I, I, I don't have to a, pay for you or pay a claim against you. If not, they're automatically covered. Now let's move it outside. It is a subcontractor and in general, so let's say you are a manufacturing company and you hire a subcontractor or landscaper to come and mow your grass, you're not responsible for the workers' comp because they're not doing the same type of operations that you do. It's a different operations. If you're a, uh, a, a home builder and you have someone come and do landscaping for your, for your, your business, then again, that person may be a sub on a job for someone else. And in that situation, they're a sub. In this situation, they're working for you to do work that's not your job so you would not be required to pay workers comp on someone doing that if you are a machine shop and you hire a subcontractor let's say you hire a subcontractor to do sales for you or you hire a subcontractor to do um to do some piece work for you you are not automatically obligated to pay a workers comp claim on that person because you're not it's not construction so that pulls you out of, of that, that portion of the law and so as long as they are a subcontractor, then you should not be responsible for an injury to them because they are independent and they are a subcontractor. I would always have a contract with those folks, uh, make sure that they have at least general liability coverage to prove that they are independent. Uh, it's one of the ways to do that and that they are working for other, other people. Those are the things. The IRS has a test of what they say is like a 20 point test the IRS looks at to see if someone's a subcontractor or an employee. The state of Tennessee has a seven point test to determine if someone is a subcontractor or employee. We have that stuff um, here below in, in our blog. But keep in mind, construction is a completely different beast than anything else. If they're a subcontractor and you're not in construction, more than likely you're fine. You're not going to get charged for them. Now you can, there's an I-15 form and an I-17 form and some other form, forms that you can do. Uh, those are actually construction. There's some other forms, non-construction, where you can choose to, to cover those subcontractors for your workers' comp. But in the marketplace of construction, if you are 
hiring someone to do work for you at a job, they're automatically going to be covered. So keep that in mind, one, if you're paying claims for your workers' comp company, but two, also on your premium. If you have any other questions about this, let us know. Happy to help. 423-292-4142. You can email us, help at veritasrm.com. You can text us back at that same phone number. You can go to our website and you can chat with us. Any way you want to get a hold of us, you can. We're happy to help. We'd love the opportunity to earn your business as well. So give us a shot on that. Until next time, thanks and God bless.